I would not recommend this book under any circumstance. Just save your time and save your brain cells, please. Hello friends, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. So today I bring a video that has been long awaited, at least for myself. It is a proper wrap up video because for all of the wrap up videos I've made, I think since August, the, the list has been like three books long maximum, but I've actually read things in the month of April and I'm so, so happy. This is the first month in a long time where I actually have a lot of books that I can talk about, actually nine for this video, which is pretty good. I think so, you know, if I do say so myself. Up until the end of March, I had only read five books in the year of 2020, but in April I read nine. So I think if this quarantine is good for anything, it's my reading life. So I'm really happy to discuss a bunch of different books with you guys, and I believe I have book ratings all the way from one stars through four and a half stars. Now I do have videos for eight out of the nine books in this wrap-up video, so I'll link all of those down below if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts. So I'm really excited to get passionate about a whole bunch of different books, whether I really Really liked them or really hated them, but without further ado, let's just jump on into this wrap-up video. The first book I have to talk about is The Savage Song by V.E. Schwab, or Victoria Schwab in this case. I read this book, I believe a little bit in March, but finished it up on April 1st, and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I actually have a full video documenting like all my thoughts on this book, so you can click that up here if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts, but I'll just do a quick overview here. So this Savage Song, we follow two main characters, Kate and August. Kate is the daughter of this, how do I describe him, like government official, like important person who like runs half a city. And then we also follow August who is a monster and he doesn't necessarily do anything super bad. Like he's trying to be a good person, but essentially these two protagonists are meant to be enemies and they end up going to the same school and August is tasked with kind of trying to get to know her and figuring out some kind of weakness, I believe. And she's also a monster kind of hunter or like torturer kind of person. So they're definitely not two people you think would ever work together. We follow them two trying to bring their city together and if any kind of bonds are built between them you'll have to read to find out. So I gave this book a three out of five stars and enjoyed my time reading it more or less. My friend Yanis and I buddy read this book and like I said we made a whole video on it talking about all our thoughts and we both had relatively same opinions but she enjoyed it a little more than I did. Anyway so the reason why I picked up this book is because my friend Yanis and I were buddy reading this book because we both love Victoria Schwab and so we were like why not read one of her YA books. And so for me personally, it was a good read. I don't think it was anything I would necessarily reread or recommend. I think there's many things I would recommend over this book, but overall I had an interesting time more or less. There was a couple times where I was on the edge of my seat ready to keep reading, but overall it was just an okay read. Definitely I would not say one of her best works, but enjoyable nonetheless. Next up for this wrap up video is a book I really, really enjoyed and it is They Both Die in the End by Holly Jackson. I loved this book. I I gave it a four out of five stars and would really recommend it. And it's one of my favorites, I think, that I read in the month of April. This book is kind of a high school mystery novel and we follow our protagonist, Pip, as she has this school project and she decides to take a deeper look into one of her town's most popular cases, where five years ago, this girl was murdered supposedly by her boyfriend who then killed himself afterwards. And she, for some reason, doesn't believe this is actually the truth of the matter. And so she kind of dives into everything and ends up finding out that maybe there's people that don't want all these secrets coming out. And so we follow her school report, basically as she puts together a whole bunch of clues and her life and how everything kind of comes together as more and more clues she gathers, who she might think the real person behind it is. And I don't read enough mystery, honestly. I think I've tried some like adult mystery novels occasionally and they weren't necessarily my thing, but this is a YA mystery novel. And considering that the main protagonist is in high school, I really related to it and really enjoyed my time reading it. I gave this book a four out of five stars because I honestly think it deserves it and it's really great especially coming from a debut novel. I found the whole way through your interest was really kept especially towards the end of the book and like the last hundred pages. So many different strings keep coming together and more and more things become uncovered and I think it's really well written, keeps your interest the whole time and gives you a very satisfying ending. I would really recommend this book if you're interested in reading a little bit more mystery because this one's a very like easy one to read.
need. There's nothing too out there that you can't wrap your head around. And for that reason, I really, really liked it and would really recommend it, especially if you're in high school, because I think you can then relate on a more personal level to some of the things the characters go through. But yeah, I really enjoyed my time reading it. Four to five stars for sure and would really recommend it. Next up on this list is my least favorite book of the month or the year. It is Orcs and Crate by Margaret Atwood. And anyway, I talk a lot about my thoughts in this in my quarantine reading wrap up vlog thing. So I'll link that up here if you want to go check that out and hear more of my thoughts for this book as well as a few others. But anyways, Orcs and Crate by Margaret Atwood. I have questions. I have many questions and I honestly don't care to hear the answers because this book was one of the worst books I have ever read. It's actually one of two books that I've ever given one star. First off, I liked nothing about this book. There was maybe one instance where I was like, oh, something happened. But everything else in the book was just so bad, I could not bring myself to enjoy it. This world is a little bit confusing, but I'll try my best. It's a dual timeline story where we follow the perspective of Jimmy and Snowman. They're actually the same person, just in the different timelines. Honestly, I don't even know, but it's a big like, I think it's genetic modification and advancements in technology that make the world what it is. And we follow Jimmy as he kind of goes through his life almost and we see his life in the past and then once he goes by the name snowman a little bit towards into his future and we follow this little timeline about Jimmy honestly I don't really know what kind of plot was going on not much Jimmy sucked as a character just saying so following two versions of him was equally as sucky as the other version of him. So honestly, I don't have a very critical review other than just being very passionate about how much I hate this book. But yeah, one out of five stars. The plot was pretty weak and there was so many like sexist remarks in this book. It pained me to read. Like I was looking at quotes throughout the story and the amount of problematic things at the end of this book was far too high. And the fact that it was written not even too, too long ago makes me question a lot of things. I get for some cases that maybe the sexist comments could be a play on how it's shown in our world today. But there's a very different way she could have done it. And there were so many small things in this book that irked me along the way. Like, oh my god, Jimmy was such a sexist piece of garbage. And the only other female character we really see in the book is just a love interest who doesn't really add much to the story other than a sad story. And that's really it. That's the whole book. I would not recommend this book under any circumstance. Just save your time and save your brain cells, please. Okay, we're gonna talk about a slightly better book now. And so the next book I read was Throne of Glass by I was gonna say Suzanne Collins, Sarah G. Mass. Now this is a very popular read and chances are if you are familiar with the YA fantasy community, you know of Throne of Glass. So basically I'll try my best to sum up this book, but we follow Selena. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her name. And she is the most famous assassin in this world. And she has been in prison for over a year, this like really intense bad prison. But she gets the opportunity to get out of this prison and gain her freedom back if she tries out to become the king's champion, which is essentially just a professional assassin for the king. And so it's this book kind of follows her and her journey competing in this competition to prove herself to be the best like killer almost and win the spot of king's champion and to earn her freedom back. Along the way we meet a whole bunch of different characters and a bunch of different possible magic in a world where no magic is supposed to exist. And so this is the first book and I believe an eight book long series if I'm not mistaken. And overall I enjoyed it per se. I gave it a three out of five stars. I enjoyed it but I definitely think think that this series is one that kind of is supposed to get better the more you read on. So I'm, I've already, I already own the whole set, which was maybe a stupid decision, but I'm gonna read all the books anyways. But yeah, so far, so good with this book. Me and my friend Caitlin are actually trying to buddy read the whole series and we're gonna start Air of Fire, I believe the beginning of June. And so I'm really excited to read the rest of these books with her because not only is it motivation to keep reading, but hopefully I will finally get all the hype for this book. As for this book particularly, uh, a reason I didn't necessarily give it a higher rating is because of one thing in particular, and that is the amount of times the word beautiful or handsome or some variation of that is used. Because in a book about assassins, I found there was far too much like lovey-dovey, like I used to be so beautiful or he's so beautiful or now I'm so beautiful. Like girl, this is a book about assassins. Where's the assassin stuff? I don't care how beautiful you are. So that was honestly one of the biggest reasons why I wasn't the biggest fan of this book, but I enjoyed my time reading it nonetheless. And 
and I will be talking about the next book in this series shortly. Next up for my April wrap up is a book I just love so much and it is Legendary by Stephanie Gardner. Anyway, so this is actually the second book in the Caraval trilogy so I don't really want to talk about what it is about because there will be major spoilers but I loved the first book of Caraval. It's basically this magical adventure competition thing that these two sisters compete in and in the first book we follow the sister Scarlet but in this book we follow the other sister named Tella and her story I found really interesting. It's a little different than Caraval but enjoyable nonetheless. So I would honestly recommend Caraval the whole trilogy. I gave the first book five out of five stars and I gave this book 4.5 out of five stars and the trilogy itself is just amazing. But anyways I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything but I am in love with the characters and the plot of this book and honestly the whole trilogy as well. I would die for these characters. They're amazing. I love the magic system and all the stuff we see about that and the cliffhanger in this book is uh it's so good. It's so good. I, I don't even have anything else to say about it. It's just so good. Honestly this trilogy is probably going to be one of my favorites in the year overall and we're only in the month of May now so honestly I would recommend the series so so much. These characters have my heart. The plot line grips you every single chapter and look and this cover it's all just so beautiful. The next book I finished in the month of April The Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass which is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I actually liked this book a little bit more than Throne of Glass. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I liked a certain like 10 chapters of this book in the middle and then I liked the story towards the end. The rest of it was more or less just like kind of vibing through it like it was good but those parts specifically I really enjoyed. Again I'm not really gonna dive into what this book is about because it will spoil the first book. There was more romancy things done well than in the first book. I didn't really like the romance that much in the first book but I liked it a little bit more in this book and also towards the end a bunch of stuff happens and leaves you on a really good cliffhanger that really makes you want to get on to the next book. And I'm not sure if Crown of Midnight like is one of the favorites in the fandom but honestly I enjoyed my time reading it a little bit more than Throne of Glass actually and I'm happy that I read it because I did enjoy it and I honestly think the story can go in a bunch of different directions now and so I'm really excited to read Air of Fire when we get to it in June. And next up an awesome book that I read is The Selection by Kira Cass. I loved this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. It is so good. I would recommend this trilogy and maybe the whole series a lot. So because The Betrothed by Kira Cass recently came out a couple weeks ago I wanted to reread her original series she was most famous for and so I ended up reading the first three books of the selection series and love my time reading them. The selection is set in kind of a futuristic world, a little bit similar to our world. It's basically set after like World War IV and life is very different. And so we follow America who is a five and in this system there are like levels people can be from one to eight. One being you are like the king, you're in the royal family and as you work your way down the kind of the poorer you get and the worse off your life is. So if you're like a four and below your life is going to be more full of hardships than those above you. And so we follow America who is a five and she loves the sky and we follow her and her simple life. But in the kingdom the prince of one has become of age and he has sent out applications to every girl aged 16 to 20 to participate in the selection. And so I believe there's like 35 states or whatever in this country there's gonna be one girl picked from each of the states to compete in the selection so all these girls come to the palace and he's gonna try to find his wife out of those girls. America some way somehow ends up applies for the selection even though she loves someone else and gets chosen to participate and so we follow her story of how her heart and how she feels conflicted. We learn a lot about the politics of the world and the different dynamics between the like from ones through eights and honestly it's a great story. It's a great mix between romance and dystopian all that kind of stuff that personally I love and I just really enjoyed my time reading it. At this time I have a video actually documenting all of my thoughts on the first three books in the series and honestly the the main trilogy of the series anyways. So you can click up here if you are interested to hear more of my thoughts. Next up what I read in the month of April is Finale by Stephanie Garbner. Garber. Why do I keep messing that up? I don't know. Anywho, this is the last and finale <laughs> book in the Caraval trilogy and like, once again I loved it. I give this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars and again enjoyed my time reading it. I'm not gonna say again like what it's about because it's the last book so that will spoil the whole thing but this book was actually my least favorite book in the trilogy but that's not even saying that much because I also gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Caraval was my favorite followed by Legendary then this book. I think it seals everything off really nicely 
nicely and also gives the author a chance to expand on the series if she so like pleases but it also gives you a satisfying ending and I just really enjoyed it. I think the romantic tensions in this book are really good. The plot is elevated a bunch of different times. There were a couple things that annoyed me in this book hence it being my least favorite but honestly I just enjoyed my time reading it so much that I had to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So for that reason it may not be my favorite in the trilogy but I found it really really good nonetheless. And like I said if you like magic and intense character dynamics and a exciting adventure story the Caraval trilogy is one of like the biggest ones I would recommend. It reads easy, it's super fun, and the whole competition of Caraval itself is super fun to follow and be a part of. And so I would really recommend this trilogy. If you watch this video and you have to read one thing off this list, it's Caraval. And finally, the last book I read in the month of April, April is The Elite by Kira Cast. This is the second book in the selection trilogy or series or whatever you want to call it. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and this was my least favorite book in the trilogy because it just missed some of the marks I was hoping for. I, it just didn't hit the same as the selection or the one. I'm not really again gonna say what this book is about because it will spoil kind of things for the first book but essentially we're still following America as she participates in the selection. I I liked this book a lot. It carried out the romance really nicely. It carried out the characters plot. We get more politic things and again I enjoyed it. There were a couple things with the romance that I was kind of annoyed by but overall I liked the story so hence I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and even regardless of my slightly lower rating of this book I would recommend the trilogy. I have yet to reread the book 4 and 5 which were kind of like the extra books that she wrote in addition to the trilogy but the original trilogy I would highly recommend. Like I said with the selection it's a great mix of of dystopian and romance and really keeps your attention because you, you want to keep knowing what happens next in the story no matter what. And so for that reason I really enjoyed this book. I would recommend it if it sounds of interest to you. Anyways that is my entire wrap up for the month of April. I'm hoping for my month of May to even read a couple more books. I'm currently aiming for 12 so if that happens I'm not really sure but I would really like it to. But nonetheless I am very happy that I was able to read nine books this month because that's an accomplishment in itself. So that being said if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video and your thoughts on them if you agree or disagree with any of my opinions because I am genuinely curious and so please let me know. Anyways I will see you all very soon in a new video so until then bye.